On today's video, we're going to talk about stock photos. We all love to hate stock photos, but we all have to use them anyway. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my favorite stock photos website. I use multiples. I'm going to show you which ones, why I use which and how pros and cons and all my dirty stock photo secrets. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to another video. If you're designing anything for the web, it's very likely that you'll end up having to use Stoke Photos. I mean, it would be ideal if you could, for every website that you design, go in a custom photo shoot and take amazing photos yourself, but that's not very likely, not with all clients. And a lot of times, even if you have a big budget for a website, I end up sometimes supplementing the website with additional stock photos just because you can't get everything and you can't do everything yourself. Now, stock photos has a very have a very bad name within designers because it's kind of a cliche of badly taken photos where it's very obvious that this is a stock photo and kind of a lot of time if used inappropriately it might decrease the quality of the website and the perception of the website to just look like a stock photo website and like a cliche website. So you have to find a way to use them properly and not to use the kind of bad stock photos. So what does that mean? I want to show you the website that I use and how I pick between cliche photos and good photos that I can actually end up using and make the website looks premium and are really good in the context of the website. So let's get started with the basics. So here's my go-to website. You probably know it because it's one of the biggest one. It's called Shutterstock. And Shutterstock is basically the cheapest website for that has the biggest database. So if you can, if you, you can search here for anything, let's just search Christmas because it's probably very popular right now. Um, you can have here photos. You can also have vector photos and, and all a bunch of stuff. Now, as you can see, these are very kind of like generic generic graphics, right? You might see this from everybody because everybody uses this website. And actually that's the main problem with Shutterstock just because it's so huge, everybody uses it. So there's a very big likelihood that if you'll get something here, the competitor or somebody else on the market will also use the same image and it will be kind of like diluted or you feel like you've saw this already. However, because this is cheap and I'll explain what cheap means in a second, this is this can still be very, very useful. Um, let me show you just a few of the images that I ended up buying. Um, so this is my personal account. And you can see here that, you know, sometimes I get graphics like vector graphics for like these bitcoins or this um, kind of like electronic cir circuit that I actually use it up ending and modifying to create a certain graphic. Um, but sometimes you can even get kind of like maybe hipster looking graphics, even though you can see this is stock photo. This was still useful for me. Um, when I did some a few landing sites and landing pages. And you can see that sometimes it's very famous for having these kind of like white background images where you can find anything. Um, so if you're trying to make some kind of a composition, you can very easily compile it with images from Shutterstock. Now, what do I mean by being cheap? Basically, they have two ways of buying images on the website. One is you can have a subscription. And if you're on a subscription, you get kind of like every month 20 photos or something like that, depending on your um, subscription. And this is when I used to work in ad agencies, basically, we were on subscription, and we're just downloading a bunch of stuff. But however, now that I'm doing kind of projects, I don't really necessarily need it every month. So I'm not on a subscription, but it's also possible to buy kind of a batches of credits and then just use them within a year. So I don't know if you saw, but when I was on the homepage, um, it says something like, right, you have two out of five downloads left. So I just buy five credits every time. And I don't know how long might last me for a few months or maybe up to a year, depending on how many projects I did and how many images I needed to. So usually I would buy a pack and then if I need it for a website, I'm not going to bill my client for every image that I purchase just because I have a bulk of them. And it's kind of like part of the, the service and the, the website that I designed. So this is kind of like the go to basic website. And sometimes 
a lot of times I would find something. But when I need something that is a little bit more important or a better image, I would go to a different website. So here is the next one kind of like inline. The next one that is my favorite is called Stocksy. Basically, Stocksy is still affordable. So here, basically, if I would buy credits, it would end up costing like something between maybe $5 or $10 per image. That's basically how it would end up costing. Now in Stocksy, this is much more, I don't know if to say artful, hipster, whatever. Those are real decent photographer that can take much more artful photos. They are also co color corrected. So you can see from here, this looks like a totally different style and vibe, a much more good looking. And a lot of times, but but the, the, the downside of this is because they are artsy, because they are artful or whatever, you can't really find everything here, right? So here they have a, like so many photographer, you can, everything that you can think about, they probably have an image for it. But this, because this is what, you know, real photographer just sent them, not were requested, you can't always find what you need. But if you can find here some kind, and a lot of time it would be around maybe lifestyle images, then you could pay something like 50 dollar per image here and um, and this is really great so a lot of time for lifestyle kind of images if you want to bring in some lifestyle and vibe to the website this stocksy can be really really great for that the next one up the level is Getty Images. Now Getty Images is also a huge library because Getty um, it's like a huge company and they've bought a lot of kind of like archives and collections. So this is a huge, huge database and it has amazing images, right? Very high quality. It also has a tutorial, you know, if you need of people in the news or famous people or something like that. However, those images are very expensive. So I think they start off at something like $500 per image and it can get to like thousands of dollars per image. This is Sometimes, again, when I used to work in ad agencies, we would buy from them, but this is like really expensive. Honestly, for website projects that I do, I rarely use this, but what I do use this for, uh, and the reason that I love this website, it, it has an incredible, incredible search. So if I would search here for like, let's, let's try Christmas here as well, you will get here on the left filters. Now, all these websites also have filters, but Getty has the best filters. So you can search by, you know, image resolution orientation, obviously, but you can say how many people you want in the image, what their age, what's their ethnicity, like if you need some color, if you need some location. So you can really, really nail down the photo and look for exactly what you need. And a lot of times, I would maybe just use this even for a reference because I could really find great quality images here. Oh, by the way, check out the... Uh, the license. So extra small, which is probably not useful for you would be $50. Um, but if you need high resolution image, um, it's going to cost something like $500. So basically, this is a really great alternative. If you need high quality, if you need to be very, very specific, they have some really amazing stuff here. But then again, it's a little bit more expensive. Next option is the free stock photos. And you probably know free stock photo. I mean, I think the most famous one today is Unsplash, which is a great project, open source project where great photographers contribute photos and you can download them for free. Now the website that I'm showing you, this one, it's called Pexels. This is actually a photo aggregator. So when you search something here, it will bring up photos from Unsplash as well as other, a lot of other free stock photos, images, um, like, I don't know, startup photos. And there's a bunch of other um, free stock photos that it will search. So it's better actually to search here than actually search in Unsplash, even though Unsplash has a great interface. This is where you'll get more opportunities and more kind of like different things to see because they have multiple websites that they're pulling from. Now, one thing about free stock photos. For me personally, when I'm working on client projects, free stock photos is usually either not an option at all or the last resort. And the reason is that you, when, it, when it comes to licensing, like what can we use this image for? Is it going to be proprietary for us or not? Uh, other, other people are gonna use it. It's very, very kind of like ambiguous. And for my clients, a lot of times they would like to know 
you know, the the specific exactly exact license that you're they're buying for when they're buying an image. So free stock photos is a little bit dodgy and I try to avoid it sometimes. Even though, you know, you you can click here and see the license or it's it's probably you can go on Unsplash and look for the license, but it's still not a huge um, thing to do with clients just because again everybody can use this image so it's not really theirs um, which is true with other stock photos as well but at least when you pay for an image it's kind of like the likelihood of other people are seeing it I feel like it kind of decreases the the quality of the website when you see like free photos that everybody else is using so that's why I usually don't use it for client projects again for personal project free stoke photos is amazing and it's very very useful when you're doing like mock-ups when you want to show um, some concepts and stuff like that so I still heavily use stoke photo like for my social media stream um, stream I might look for free photos from here just because I want to use the free stoke photos but again for client work and website work this is usually not my first um, my first priority now one last option that I want to show you here which I feel is not a lot of people know about it and it's still very helpful is a website that's called Snapwire. Now Snapwire, um, what goes here, it's basically kind of like a collective of photographers and you're doing photo contests. So you say, I'm willing to spend $500 on an image, which again, $500 is a lot and I've mentioned before in Getty that I think $500 is a lot but then again if you're considering whether I should buy a photo right now or do a custom photo shoot then custom photo shoot would probably cost you like a few thousand dollars so what goes on in Snapwire is you're going to held a contest and a lot of people a lot of some amateur or some professional photographers from around the world are going to pitch in and try to shoot the photo that you're aiming for and the one that is going to win is going to get the the money from the competition and let me show you something that I was using this website for um, let me see if we can see my profile here all right so this is kind of a contest that I had to do I was looking for an image with um, kind of like a father and a son inside a car but just for because of the brand I wanted them also to wear a blue t-shirt so this is something very very specific you know even in Getty if I would go to Getty and I did go and I try to search for father son car you know to find this specific setup where the father sits in the front a son or a daughter sits in the background and the father wears a blue shirt this is so specific that I couldn't find it on any Stoke photo so basically what I did here is I did kind of this competition and a bunch of people took photos and as you can see from the photos I would say the quality kind of ranges from stuff that looks a little bit amateurish um, to stuff that looks higher quality but this is another option for you to get if you're trying to look for a very very custom image if you have kind of the art direction in your head already and you have the budget and you're trying to actually save money uh, because you can't afford a, a custom photography and uh, for example in my case it's not only I I'm based in Tel Aviv Israel and so is this client that needed this but they needed the photo to look American so even if we would want to do the photography ourselves we can't do it based here in Israel just because it would look Israeli and not look American even though their audience is American and to you know fly to the US to to make this photo shoot it would just be so expensive so in that case Snapwire was really a good solution for us and uh, yeah helped us solve the problem all right guys I feel like the, those are all the resources that I use when I'm using photography in my website as I said on the beginning I love doing custom photography when it's possible a lot of times I would actually do the photography myself in terms of you know taking the photos of the team or doing some kind of an office if you want to like for the about us page you want to take some office photos I would do this myself sometimes I would hire a photographer to work with me and do the, the photos more professionally than I can do myself but that being said a lot of times it's not enough a lot of times you need photos for hero section or all kinds of different sections of the website and a lot of time we supplement using different photography websites so those are the ones that are my favorite would love to hear from you if you have favorite website that I didn't mention here would love to hear from you in the comments 
And uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about doing website, be sure to check our courses down in the description. I will see you on the next video.